Hello and welcome to Gefet in the Daf Yomi. I'm Yael Shimoni, giving you a short cheer to take your learning in the Daf a little bit deeper together with Hadran and Yeshivat Risha, learning together Daf Yomi. So this is our last Gefet, our last cheer for Rosh Hashanah. Yishar Koach for everyone who reached up till here. And what we'll be dealing with today is a very big question. Who needs Chazarat Hashatz? Chazarat Hashatz is something that is hard for many people. And the Gemara at the end of Rosh Hashanah shows us a very interesting debate between Rashbag and Chachamim regarding Chazarat Hashatz. And this year, in an ox- uh, uh, extraordinary manner, we will be using the Tosfot to learn Halacha also, which is not what happens usually. But this is a Tosfot that will take us into the Psat Paskin of the Shulchan Aruch, and a question that arises in the Bet Yosef regarding the sugya and the Tosfot we will learn together today. So let's begin. We're really approaching the end of Masech Rosh Hashanah. We're in Daf Lamed Hey. And the Mishnah tells us that there is a big machloket between Rabban Gamiel and Chachamim. The beginning of the Mishnah talks about the kios of Rosh Hashanah. But we're interested at the Seifa of the Mishnah, the end of the Mishnah, that is discussing Tfilot every day. Tfilot every day, Rosh Hashanah, not Rosh Hashanah, Shabbos, Yom Tov, Rosh Chodesh, Chol. And there is a big machloket there, says the Mishnah. The same way that a Shliach Tibur is Chayab, so is every one and one of us Chayab. That is the day of Chachamim. Chachamim think that each and every one of us needs to daven, and the fact that we have a shliach tibur does not help us be from our personal chova to daven to fila. Rabban Gamliel says, shliach tibur motziat rabim mide chovatam. Rabban Gamliel thinks that the shliach tibur can daven for everyone, and if a shliach tibur is davening, I Yael don't need to daven. I can just listen to him and be yoitze yide chova. The Gemara asks, what exactly is the understanding of Chazarat Hashatz according to each side? And brings the following discussion. The same way that a Shliach Tibur is Chayav, so is everyone in one, that is the Dea of Chachamim. A Baraita quoted by the Gemara tells us that Chachamim asked Rabban Gamliel the following questions. Tanya, Amrula le Rabban Gamliel, a Baraita, the Chachamim asked Rabban Gamliel, if you are right that you say that a shliach tibur can be motzi, all of us, why do the people in shul daven? We shouldn't daven. We should just have one person davening and we'll be answering amen. Why do we do all of this? Why do we do the tefillah twice? Says Rabban Gamil, a very interesting answer. The reason that the tibur davens before the shliach tibur is to help the shliach tibur prepare for his davening. According to Rabban Gamliel, the davening of the tzibur is not very important. The tzibur is there only to help the shliach tzibur in his kavana to get ready for the real thing. The real show, the, the, the rest of the tzibur is just a run. The show is the shliach tzibur davening. Rabban Gamliel asks then Chachamim, according to you, why does the shliach tzibur do Chazarat HaShatz. We don't need Chazarat HaShatz. Everybody should just daven on their own. Why twice? Answer Chachamim. I'll tell you why twice. The reason that Shliach Tibur davens is only to help those who do not know how to daven. So according to both of them, we don't really need twice. According to Rabban Gamliel, it's a run and a show. And according to Chachamim, you don't really need Shliach Tibur. You don't need another davening. It's only there to help those who are not Baki, who do not know how to daven. Tells Rabban Gamliel, if you're right that Shliach Tibur is there to help those who don't know how to daven, I'm telling you that if he can help those who don't know how to daven, he can also help those who do know how to daven. That's the Baraita in the Gemara. If we move on to the next daf, which is the daf of today, daf Lam and Hey, says Rabbi Abba Barmimi, a very interesting statement regarding the pasking of Alacha. Kisalik Rabbi Abba Mimi Persha. Modim Chachamim le Rabban Gamliel Babachot shel Rosh Hashanah veshel Yom HaKippurim. Rabbi Abba says 
even though there's a big dispute between Rashbag and Chachamim, there is one time in the year that Chachamim agree with Rashbag that the main davening is the davening of the Shliach Tzibur, and that's the davening that the Shliach Tzibur can also be moti the Baki, also be moti a person who does know how to daven. When? In Yom Yimnoraim, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur. And as a matter of fact, I think we all feel that, that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, what the Shliach Tzibur does is a different story. And there, everybody needs the Shliach Tzibur, and the Shliach Tzibur can really be moti everyone, also those who know how to daven. And that's where Chachamim agree with Rabban Gamliel. So let's just go over this again. There is a big dispute. Chachamim think that you really don't need Shliach Tibur. He's there only to help those who don't know how to daven. Rashbag says, no, we only need the Tibur to daven in order to help the Shliach Tibur do his job. They're the run and he's the show. But there is one time in the year that Chachamim agree with Rashbag and think that the real thing is what? The Shliach Tibur does, and that the Shliach Tibur is there for everyone, those who know how to daven and those who don't. And that's in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. At the end of Daf Lamedal and Amubet, we have another passage which is very important for us. Up till now, we understood the Machloket and we saw that Chachamim agree with Rabban Gamliel. But here, Rav Achabar Avia is teaching us, according to Rabbi Shimon Hasida, what exactly is Rabban Gamliel's shita? I'll explain the question. How much power does the Shliach Tibur have? If the Shliach Tibur, according to Rabban Gamliel, can daven for everyone, maybe no one needs to be at shul. Maybe I don't have to go to shul and I'll be oite according to Rabban Gamliel. So let's see what Rav Achia Bar Avira said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Chasida. אמר רב אחא בר אבירא, אמר רבי שמעון חסידה, פוטר היה רבן גמליאל אפילו עם שבשדות. says רב שמעון חסידה, even those um, the people who would work in the fields, even though they weren't in shul, according to Rashbag, the shliach tibur would be moti them, and they did not have to die, and because the shliach tibur did the job for them. Continues the Gemara and says, it doesn't matter if they're here in shul, no, it doesn't matter if they're anus, it's fine. If they have no choice not to be in shul, they can be, be moti by the shliach tibur. But if they can come to shul and they decide not to go to shul, then the shliach tibur cannot help them. Where do we learn this? We learn this in Birkat Kuanim and Birkat Kuanim, which is taught in Masech Sota. There is a very famous statement that if you are standing in shul and you don't go to be before the Kohanim to give their, to hear their Baracha, you're not Midbarach because you're purposefully making yourself not being Midbarach. But if you're outside of Shul and you don't have a chance to be in Shul, for example, you have little kids and you don't want them to make a big noise, so you're outside of Shul, you will still get the Baracha of the Kohanim because you're Anus. That's why you're not there. But if you had a choice and you decided not to take it, then the Kohanim will not bless you. So the same idea, says Rabbi Shimon Chasida, regards the people who don't come to shul. If you don't come to shul because you have a problem, then you don't even have to daven according to Rashbag. The Shliach Tibur will take care of you. So the Sugiya finishes by saying, Ki at Aravin, Amar Rabbi Yaakov Varidi, Amar Rabbi Shimon Chasida, Lo patar Rabban Gamliel el ha'am shebasadot. Says Ravin, Rabban Gamliel allows the Shliach Tibur and says that the Shliach Tibur be Motzi, those who have to go to work, who work in the fields, but those who work in the city can come into Shul, and therefore those who can't come into Shul and choose not to come to Shul are not being Yoitse from the Shliach Tibur, even according to Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. So, now we understand the shito fully. According to Chachamim, if you know how to daven, you must daven. The Shliach Tibur cannot help you. According to Rashbag, the Shliach Tibur can help two people. Those who don't know how to daven, excuse me, according to Chachamim, the Shliach Tibur can help those who don't know how to daven. And according to Rashbag, the Shliach Tibur can also help those who can daven. They have to be in shul, they have to listen to the Shliach Tibur. But 
now we've learned that according to Rashbag, even those who cannot come to Shul, the Shliach Tibur can help them if they have no choice, if they're Anus, if they're Am Shabbat people who work in the fields. So that's a new thing that we've learned according to Rashbag. And the Gemara explains to us where do we learn this idea that if you're Anus, you're still Yoitse. And if you have a choice, you're not Yoitse. We learned that from Birka Kohanim. Up till now, we only learned Gemara. Now, let's go to Halacha for a short while. What is Pasking in Halacha? So, we are Pasking the Shita of Chachamim, and Chachamim, as we've learned, think that each and every one of us needs to daven. And if you know how to daven, Shlech Tibur cannot be mo to you. You have to daven. You can't just count on him. But if you have a problem, Let's say you're blind and you don't know how to daven, don't remember the tefillah. I have a good blind friend. That's her situation. The shliach tibur can be motzi her. And if you are not baki for other reasons, you don't know how to daven, the shliach tibur can be motzi you. And also, on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, that's another place where you might be mixed up and you might not be as baki as usual. And even those who do know how to daven can be yoitse from the Shleich Tibur and Davin with him and just enter Amen, and they will be Motzi according to the Chachamim. So every day, the Shleich Tibur is there only for those who don't know how to Davin. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, the Shleich Tibur is there for everyone. That's Halach. Now, we'll do what we usually do. Let's learn Rashi, let's learn Tosfot, and we'll see a very surprising thing happening in Rashi and Tosfot on this Sugi. Let's begin in Rashi. That explains to us the people who are working in the fields. Why is Rav Gamliel thinking that the Shlech Tibur can help them? Explains Rashi the following. Rashi tells us, Yael, in case you did not learn the halachot of Birkat Kohanim, I'm filling you in. In Masachat Sota, it tells you that if you have a choice and you don't go in front of the Kohanim, you will not get the Kohanim Baracha. Remember this Rashi. Now, let's go to the Beit Yosef. The Beit Yosef, he is Rabbi Yosef Karo, and he wrote also the Shulchan Aruch, and his book, the Beit Yosef, gives us a lot of background for the pasking of the Shulchan Aruch. And the Beit Yosef brings us a very interesting question that the Rambam was asked once. The Rambam was asked by a group of people. We, in our shul, know how to daven. All of us know how to daven. So is our shliach tibur allowed to daven at all? He's not davening for anyone. We're pasking according to Chachamim. We only need a shliach tibur if somebody doesn't know how to daven. So why do we need to hear the tefillah twice? That's the question that the Rambam was asked. And as we hear this question, these people actually really wanted the Rambam to tell them, stop doing uh, the Chazarat HaShatz. Chazarat HaShatz is taking very long. You don't want Chazarat HaShatz very well. You don't need it. Maybe it's even Barach HaLevatala. That was their question. What was the Rambam's answer? Says the Rambam the following. I don't care if you think that nobody in the shul doesn't know how to daven. It doesn't make a difference. You're chayev to hear the shaliyach tibur. You know why? Because you have guests. And do you know that your guests know how to daven? So that's one reason that you must have the shaliyach tibur do chazar shatz because you want to be people who host guests in your shul. That's one reason. And then continue the rampam and says the following. You should know that anything that chachamim were metaken even though they did it for one reason, even if the reason changed, the Takana stays. Why? Because Chachamim don't create things that are changing according to the situation. They create a rule that applies always. And I can tell you the reason why, says the Rambam. Because if you have people you don't know in your show, you want to go around and ask Every and every one of them, do you know how to daven? You know how to daven? That will be a very big problem. That will not be hachmasad ochim. That can actually make people feel very uncomfortable. Therefore, don't be so smart. Don't look for ways to make your tefillah shorter. Just accept the takana of chachamim 
And don't go asking around people, do they know how to daven or don't they? Just listen to the davening a second time. That was the Rambam brought in the Bet Yosef according to our sugya. Now we understand this question and this answer very well because we've learned the sugya. All of this has been our door to learn a very, very famous and interesting Tosfot in Daf Lamed He. The Tosfot in Daf Lamed He is talking about the Shita of Rabban Gamliel. Rabban Gamliel says, and I repeat his statement, that the Shlich Tibur can be motzi not only those who don't know the tefillah, but also those who do know how to dive. And then the Tosfot suddenly says a very interesting statement. It says the Tosfot the following. According to this line in the sugya, which is the Shita of Rabban Gamliel, Bahag, Baal Alachot Gdolot, was passing halacha, that if I davened on Rosh Chodesh, and I forgot to mention Ya'ale Ve'avo, and according to halacha, I need to re-daven, because I missed a very important part of the tefillah, because this portion of the tefillah will change the entire tefillah. I can have two choices. Either I can dive in everything again and mention Yad Avivu, or I can just listen to the Shliach Tibur, enter Amen, and he will be moting me. Why? Because the Shliach Tibur can also be moti a person who is Baki. That's the Basks of Bahag. And the Tosfot asks, how can Bahag be asking this? This doesn't make sense. We've learned together that Bahag we learn together that Rashbag thinks that if you are in shul the sh and you're not davening, the shleich tibur will not be moed to you. We learned that Rashbag thinks that the shleich tibur can help people who have no choice not to come to shul, not a person who is in shul. If you are in shul, you should daven. But it says Rash, but it says the Tosfot the following. After all, we learned we can understand the psika of Bahag. Why? Because Rashi told us. What does it mean to be a person who can be yotze from the shliach tibur? If you are a person who does not want to listen to shliach tibur, who does not want to go to shul purposefully, that's a person who will not get the grace of being yotze from the shliach tibur. But if you really tried to daven, but you made a mistake, you will be yotze even though you're in shul. And that's a big Chiddush of the Tosfot, and it's a big Chiddush of Rashbag, that according to Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel, if I made a mistake in Tefillah, the Shliach Tibur can help me, and I can listen to him and not do the whole thing again, just ride, take a tramp on the back of the Shliach Tibur. And says the Tosfot, you should also go and read what I have to say in, da, in Brachot Daf Chavtet, which we'll do in a moment. But let's just sum up what we've learned from the Tosfot. First, we've learned that according to Rashbag, the Shliach Tibur can be moti only those, also those who know how to daven. But these have to be people who want to be in shul, not people who don't want to be in shul. Bahag thinks that the Shliach Tibur can also help somebody who was mistaken and forgotten to say Yale Avo. And the Tosfot asks, how can that be? Only a person who's anus can be moti from the Shlech Tibur. Answers the Tosfot, a person who tried to dive in and muffed up, that's like an anus. And that's why, according to Rashbag, he can be yoitze from the Shlech Tibur. Let's go now to this Tosfot in Berachot Afkavtet, who adds a little bit more to this halacha. The Tosfot there says, that Bahag was asking that if you forgot Yale Avo, you can be Yotze from the Shliach Tibur. But tells you to tell us what, how do you do that? You have to listen to the Shliach Tibur. You have to enter Amen to the Shliach Tibur. You have to listen to every single word that the Shliach Tibur says, but you don't have to say it in your mouth. And you can do that because you really tried to dive in. You were working hard. You just muffed up. And that's why the Shliach Tibur can help you because like you're like the people who went to work in the fields. And also, the Tosfot adds two things to the Salacha. Not only if I forgot Rosh Chodesh, also if I forgot Nashiv Aruach Amorid HaGeshem, or I forgot the Ten Talum Atar Libracha, I can ride on the Shliach Tibur in all these little, little 
problems I had with my tefillah, big problems, little problems. If I tried and it didn't work out, I'm honest and I can be like the Am and the Sadur. But at the end of the Tosfot, the Tosfot says the following. Harav Rabbi Meir was pasking. It is true what Bahag says, if I forgot to say Alevi Avo. But if I forgot an entire bracha, that's not good enough. If I forgot an entire bracha, that proves that I did not really try to daven. That's not serious daven. If I really did everything I could and I forgot a passage that changes because it's a special day, that's okay. Then I can listen to Shlech Tibur. But if I was such a lousy davener that I forgot an entire bracha, I need to daven again. So this is our addition. Rabbi Meir in the Tosfo tells us this whole idea that Shlech Tibur can help me is only if I really try to be a good davener and I'm muffed up. But if I was being a lousy davener and I forgot a whole baracha, I cannot do the trick and I cannot listen to the Shlech Tibur. I have to actually go and say everything in my own words. After we've seen all of this, we have a big surprise because what we've learned in the Tosfot is only according to the Shira of Rashbag. And we've learned that we are passing according to the Chachamim. The Beit Yosef asks this question and he's saying, I don't understand the Tosfot that you've learned now, Yael. Why does the Tosfot bring Bahag? And why does Bahag think that you can learn Halacha from the Shita of Rabban Gamliel? We are passing according to Chachamim. Chachamim only agree with Rabban Gamliel on Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. They don't agree with Rabban Gamliel on every day. And Bahag is talking about every day. He's talking about Rosh Chodesh. And Tosfot is talking about Mashiv Aruch Mugir Gashem. But then Talu Matali Bracha. How could this be? Does the Tosfot not notice that this is all only according to the Shita of Rabban Gamliel? How could that be? Asks the Bet Yosef. That's a very strong question. Let's see the Bet Yosef's answer. Says the Bet Yosef, the Afshar, maybe, because we've learned that Rabban Gamil thinks that the Shleach Tibur helps those who even know how to daven, maybe Rabbanan agree with Rabban Gamil. If I know how to daven, but I made a mistake, maybe I'm like a person who doesn't know how to daven. And therefore, says the Bet Yosef, even though the Bahag spoke only in the Shita of Rashbag, Chachamim agreed to Rashbag only on, also on this point. Not only in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, do Chachamim agree with Rashbag. They also agree with Rashbag with people who made small mistakes. And therefore, there's another good reason not to stop saying Chazarat Hashas, because it's not there only for those who don't know how to daven. It's also for great daveners who might make mistakes. And that's why the Bet Yosef is pasking halacha, according to the Tosfot, according to Bahag, even though the Bahag spoke in the Shita of Rashbag, because the Bet Yosef thinks that Chachamim agree, and that the reason that we have Chazarat Hashat is because it's a safety net, not only for those who don't know how to daven well, also for the great daveners. They also need a safety net, because we all make mistakes. And that's Pasking and Shulchan Aruch, Orachaim, Hilchot Bila, Siman, Kuf Chafdal, and Seif Yud. So let's sum up what we saw up till now. This is a very rare uh, situation that we're actually learning Halacha Lemaase from the Sugya. So first we saw there's a big machoket between Mashbag and Chachami. The question is, can a shleach tibur be moti, somebody who did not daven on his own? Rashbag thinks that you can, and Chachamim thinks that you can't, but Chachamim agree with Rashbag on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We've also learned that Chachamim agree that if I really tried to daven and I made a small mistake, not a big mistake, not if I forgot an entire bracha, but if I made a small mistake, it was Rosh Hashanah and I forgot it, and I I'm davening Shachris or Mincha that I must say Yale Vyavo. Or if I'm saying Veten Talumatali Vacha and I missed that and I must go back. In these occasions, says the Shulchan Aruch, also Chachamim agree with Rashrag, and that is according to the Tosfot and the Tosfot that brought Bahag in our Sugya. So, Baruch Hashem, we finished our learning of Rosh Hashanah with Halacha. And we saw that Tosfot many times does not only explain a sugiya or understand the sugiya, many times he brings important shitot le halacha, and the Shulchan Aruch will be passing the Tosfot shita halacha le maase, like in our sugiya. Yishar Korach to those who are finishing Rosh Hashanah, 
and I hope that many others will join us for the next Masechta. See you soon, Be'ezrat Hashem, next week. Take care. Thank you.